Hi, this is Joyce Polino Crane. I'm the news director at Westford Cat, and I am here today with Bill Olson, superintendent of schools, and Hello. Tom Clay, who is a school committee member, and he has taken on the lead role for the school committee as a um, as an advisor for bridging a six percent gap in the teacher salaries in Westford, and so. Bill and Tom are here today to explain the reason why they would uh, like um, voters to consider a $1.6 million tax increase um, at when they go to vote at town meeting on March 25th. Tom and Bill, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks for the opportunity, Joyce. Yes, Happy to have you here. So we're just going to go over a little bit of information about why um, and how mm -hmm the teacher's gap, the salary gap, gap came about and why you want to bridge that. Um, so I'll give you the floor, Tom. Take it, take it away. <laughs> no, that, that's, uh, that's great. And we look forward to digging into the detail. It's great to have this much time to go through what uh, is an important, uh, but has many aspects. So we, we're happy to explain them. I think the most important thing for the taxpayers to know at the highest level is uh, it's a $1.6 million uh, override request. Um, the way that we come to that number is we look at uh, how we want to migrate the current pay level of the Westford teachers, which is which is drifted below um, comparable communities over time. We want to bring them up to that average level. The target is to get them to average. We're not trying to, even though they outperform, we're not trying to go to the top of the scale. We're trying to go to the average. Um, so the amount of money is the amount needed to bring them up to that average at the end of the third year of the contract that we're negotiating minus the amount that the town is able to support given the current fiscal uh, and financial outlook. So that, that gap is 1.6 million, and uh, our intention is to phase it in over three years so the average taxpayer would see in their tax bill in the first year a, a $60 average increase, second year would be a $120 average increase, third year would be a $180 average increase, and then thereafter. That's based on a, an average assessed house. That's correct. That's exactly right. Of what is it, $490,000? $490,000 is, is currently the average assessment value in the town of Westford. So, Bill, how did this gap come about? Well, I've been uh, talking to the school committee now for about uh, 10 or 11 years off and on about my concern over the fact that our salaries seem to be lagging behind uh, what the Department of Education has uh, presented as comparable communities. Uh, now they select a group of communities based on uh, the composition of the student population uh, and other characteristics that uh, they equate to being similar to Westford. And our salaries have consistently lagged behind the average. And so at this point in time, uh, the committee has decided to, to take some action to correct that. I mean, we are a labor market uh, like the private sector. Um, what uh, particularly hurt the Westford uh, uh, teachers and school system in particular was about six years ago when we had uh, two out of three years where staff took no, no salary increase, while others in other comparable communities were certainly uh, were increasing. So I, was it fiscal year 2010, fiscal year that, 2011, fiscal that's correct. year 2012? Yes. That's exactly right. right. And I do remember that period. There was uh, a lot of... Um, frustration and anger mm -hmm. um, over uh, salary uh, yeah. increases and finally things were worked out. Yeah, and I, and I don't think there was any intent, certainly on the town's part, to keep salaries low. I think if you recall, uh, because I've now been here 31 years and over that period of time there's been an extraordinary um, construction, uh, uh, extraordinary amount of construction in terms of school facilities and town facilities to meet the growing population. And so what we've seen, uh, Joyce, is uh, debt service and debt retirement at one point in time escalated from about $1 million to almost $11 million, so that the town was building facilities, but the operating funds were a little bit short in terms of funding essential services, uh, not in all areas, but in many areas. And so not only the school system, but other town departments uh, were vying for very, very limited funds. And so I think that's one of the variables that uh, has caused the salaries to to not progress as as quickly as as most other communities. And I, I'd agree, Bill, that the um, 
my, my entree into this was to uh, enter the negotiation for the previous contract, which was following this zero, zero, one percent contract. And I think what that zero, zero, one percent contract did, uh, it was during a very difficult time financially for the town. Mm -hmm. The outlook was scary for everybody. It was sort of in the depths of the, uh, of the economic crisis of 2009. Um, I think it was the right thing to ask for. I salute the teachers for ultimately agreeing to that. Um, but that really raised uh, the pay level to, in everyone's mind. It became a very visible issue. It became something that was very real to teachers, uh, something they began to talk a lot about. And, and during that time, the gap that, that probably preexisted grew. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we kicked off the most recent uh, salary negotiation three years ago, the first thing we wanted to do is get on the same playbook about exactly what the pay level was. We all had a sense that it was trailing, but we didn't know um, at least I didn't know, being new to it at the time, uh, what to compare against and what the right measurement was. Uh, so what we did was we um, surveyed a bunch of school districts and we also talked to some organizations like the superintendent's organization mm -hmm. um, who frequently are working with issues of, of teacher compensation and negotiation about uh, what are these market baskets or these benchmark groups? Where do they come from? What are the right ones to use? Um, and uh, Rather than pick one, we actually picked five of them, which we, uh, we can go into uh, detail if you'd like. I, I do want to go into detail. <laughs> I'm really interested in the communities that you've mm -hmm. contrasted. Um, the interesting takeaway is that all of them um, more or less tell the same story. So whether you're talking about a regional market basket, which is sort of a radius around the town of Westford, uh, whether you're talking about the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education benchmark set, mm -hmm. which Bill mentioned before, um, We've had some very uh, good interaction with uh, people in the town about other ideas for, for uh, benchmark metrics. One of the ones that we've been tracking uh, is generated from the Department of Labor Statistics. Uh, and um, so we've been tracking that one as well. And they all show that the gap level is between five and 8%. And so we feel pretty confident that e no matter which of these approaches you use, we're getting a pretty consistent read that the teachers are in fact um, you know, on an average, if you're comparing the salary step levels, are uh, somewhere between five and eight percent behind. And so, what about um, this uh, this letter from uh, anonymous, which typically I don't, um, I, I I would not bring up something that does not have a name on it. Mm -hmm. However, it was an interesting letter. It was in the selectman's packet, and because it was there. Um, I came across it and um, thought I would just ask you about it. This, mm -hmm. this writer um, um, questions or you know, challenges whether a, um, an override is necessary and says something to the effect of, it appears to me these cities and towns represent Westford's market basket based upon the comparable percentage of each municipal budget that is spent on education. And he goes on to talk about what the town collects in taxes, you know, versus what some other towns collect in taxes. And um, I know you've read the letter, Tom. Can you um, respond to what he is saying here? Well, first of all, I'd like to thank... Or she, I don't he know. Or she. <laughs> <laughs> or she. I'd, li I'd like to thank the letter writer for taking an interest in mm -hmm. doing um, a substantial amount of work, including that is not only that analysis, but also some calculations. And having done that work myself, I know it takes a lot of time. So. Thank you for people who, um, who are interested in this and being engaged. And uh, I would love to talk with, uh, with anyone who's, who's interested and passionate about it like this writer is uh, at any time. So two things I would mention about, um, about the question there. Um, one is I think that the letter writer maybe misunderstands or from some of the materials um, somehow came to the conclusion that the benchmark group is based on percentage of budget of town budget spent on education. That's not, that's not the case. That's not the way that any of these benchmark groups are constructed. So at some point there was a misunderstanding about, about that. Um, the writer, letter writer goes on to suggest uh, um, using average tax bill as a, as a way to create comparable communities. Um, there's a class of uh, market baskets called, uh, that rely on what are called ability to pay metrics. And it looks at other towns that have similar household income or uh, per capita income or real estate value, things that track financial metrics. Um, the one that we've chosen to include in our analysis uh, is generated from the Department of Labor Statistics. Uh, actually, uh, Margaret Murray, a former school committee member, was the one who, uh, who, who put this one together and actually has done quite a lot of uh, academic work uh, on that. 
uh, as, a, as a good um, way to track these benchmarks. So we do have a strong ability to pay uh, style benchmark group in the mix that is generating numbers that are very, very close to the other benchmark groups that, that we're using as well. So to the, to the general point of does it make sense to use an ability to pay metric is, is one of the market baskets we track. Mm -hmm. uh, I would agree, and we've done that. I think the specific one um, that, uh, that this letter writer suggests, I think to choose a single metric um, like the average tax bill uh, can be misleading. It can pull a lot of communities in that don't share a lot of the characteristics of Westford. I think the Department of Labor uh, Services version, which actually takes a number of economic measures and incorporates them together, really does a better job of gathering communities that are like us. So I think for viewers that are interested in this ability to pay metric style, um, I would direct them to look at the, at the Department of Labor Services version that we have included. And Bill, um, you mm -hmm. started out asking for a $3 million override, and now it's $1.6 million. And um, can you explain to me and to the rest of the viewers how, uh, how it went from what happened? Three point, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, very easily. Um, in our models, um, we, were, uh, we were actually progressing the outlay forward that involved not only step increases, but cost of living adjustments. Um, and so once we backed that out, we realized that you know, we've been carrying a number here that included two elements that are normally um, carried in our operating budget, and that is the step increases for our staff, not only teachers but all staff, and also the cost of living adjustment. So those will remain in the operating budget. And so the incremental amount, the 1.6, is the actual override amount. So. so and explain what step is, what, what a step is yes, for a teacher. Yes, uh, the convention in, in education in many states across the country is to advance teachers a certain amount of pay uh, for every year of service in, in the school system. Um, it's done universally across Massachusetts and many, many other uh, states across the country. I think there are only probably one or two uh, states in the entire nation that have a unified contract that applies to all teachers in all communities in that state. So it's up to the individual uh, communities to collectively bargain, but the convention has been for step increases uh, for year associated with years of service. In Westford, we go from uh, step one to step 14, where a teacher maxes out in terms of uh, experiencing a, a step increase along with a cost of living adjustment. After step 14, it's simply a cost of living uh, adjustment. So the, the teachers who have master's degrees and have been here a long time, mm -hmm. the gap is lower for those. Is that correct? It, it tends to be a little bit lower right now because in this last contract, um, we had a certain amount of money to, to work with that was, it was in the uh, town's parameter in terms of uh, cost of living adjustment. But we weighted that to um, and targeted that at certain parts of our contract. We found that the the earlier step levels in some of, some of our columns, bachelor's, master's, and master's plus 30, some of the earlier step levels were a little bit more competitive uh, than uh, the middle part of the salary range and the top part of the salary range. So we tried, tried to take the available funds and target those to those areas of the contract that we were most efficient in. What's a starting salary for a teacher in Westford? Starting salary is about $46,000 right now. And what, um, in a comparative com community, um, I used in my article Wellesley, which probably wasn't, hmm. isn't right. fair in terms of comparison of communities, but I was, I was trying to show how a maybe more upscale community, I'm not sure upscale is the correct word, mm -hmm. but a community mm -hmm. with maybe a higher tax base um, where they start their teachers at. And it was a little bit higher, I, bl I remember. Can you speak to that, Tom? Yeah. Um, sure. So, uh, and, and if you're interested, we could pull some uh, data and yeah, share it uh, out of the table. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, first of all, just let me, uh, in the principal market basket that we're using, I can just tell you what the communities are. And then I think I have an outtake um, uh, for the entry level. So in the, in the current year, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education market basket, it includes towns like Franklin, Hingham, Hopkinton, uh, Neshoba. Neshoba is not a, it's a school district, not a town. Is it? Right, correct. Uh, Needham, 
Sharon, Shrewsbury, Wachusett, Wellesley, Westford, and Winchester. So it is true that there are towns like Wellesley in there, but there are also lots of other towns that, uh, that you know, are, have a lower level of wealth than Westford does mm -hmm. as part of the comparison. Um, if memory serves me, I think the average of, the, of that group at the beginning entry level is about 5% um, uh, higher than what the Westford entry level is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, on a roughly $50,000 uh, level, that would be $2,000. $2,500 less on average as a start. Um, sometimes people will um, look at a number like 5 or 6% in terms of this gap and they'll say, is that a big number? Um, over the course of a career, it's a big number. Um, in terms of total accumulated pay, it's certainly in the tens of thousands of dollars. So, um, so we believe that's a meaningful number. That's right, because if you look at the future value of, of money, if you do a spreadsheet, it, sure. just, it does add up. Yeah, it adds mm -hmm. up a lot. And, uh, to, to the question about there being differences at different step levels, it's um, the way that we do this calculation, we actually take every contract for everybody that we're comparing against, we, we take all the numbers out and put it in a big spreadsheet, and we track each, uh, each step level, as Bill described. So if you're a bachelor, uh, if you have a bachelor's degree and five years teaching experience, we pull that level from all of the contracts that we're comparing against, and we look just at that level. Uh, and then we're looking at the gap between where Westford teaches and where the average is for our group. And it is different by, by a step. So um, in some of the steps, the difference is only 2 or 3%. In some of the steps, the difference is more like 10 or 12%. So that's huge. Um, so it, it, can, it can be uh, a big difference. One way to think about this um, is if you look at a total payroll effect, uh, which, would, which weights the number of teachers in each step and the gap at that step, uh, what we're talking about is, I think, a 4.36% 4 total payroll change if we take the Westford teachers as they exist today and move them to their market basket. So you can see we've got more teachers on average in areas that are a little bit closer and fewer teachers in some of the areas that have the really, really big gaps. But it's, and, uh, and it's a real number. And one of the important points to, to stress again, <clears throat> Joyce, is it's the average of the market basket. It's not the high end of the market basket, so that there will still be some communities you know, that, that pay higher. But um, we think it's a reasonable approach. Uh, I think we've had a good, some good faith discussions with the uh, teachers in the past about where is a fair and equitable uh, level to be in terms of compensation. So I remember a former school committee member used to always say, you get a lot of bang for your buck in Westford. Mm -hmm. What does it cost to run the school system, Bill? The uh, average per pupil cost in Westford right now is uh, $13,100, and the state average is $14,900. Um, the um, elements that go into the calculation are salaries, um, so we're lean there in comparison, as we've been saying, to uh, comparable communities, but we've also been as efficient as possible. If you look at some of the Department of Education data that breaks down expenditures on what they call a functional category, the about 10 or 11 categories that they assess school systems, our spending is consistently below the comparable communities in those, um, in those categories also, which means we don't ask for more money than we need. We try to target our money also to meet those priority services that we uh, observe uh, in children in terms of academic needs, behavioral needs, uh, the professional development needs of our staff, the transportation and ancillary services that we provide. So I think we do a very, very good job in providing qu certainly quality education. Uh, you know, Stanford uh, University, as I said, um, ranked our students fourth in the nation uh, in achievement uh, of uh, out of 12,300 school systems. Uh, Newsweek Magazine ranked Westford Academy as the 47th best high school in the nation, second in Massachusetts behind Boston Latin, which is a a very stringent exam entry school, and so that's quite an honor. And uh, Nerd Wallet, if you recall, which is a financial sort of a financial uh, cons consultation uh, website, uh, said a couple of years ago that Westford, in the state of Massachusetts, the Westford Public Schools, represented the best bang for the buck of any school system in the entire state. So, I think we've done a very good job at providing a very quality education to our students. Well, I, I should disclose that my own children graduated from Westford Academy, so um, I uh, and they, you know, I'm pretty proud of them. And um, yeah, you should be. And uh, so I, yeah, can't disagree on that. Um, if I could just emphasize that, because 
something that I think the public uh, might be interested in and maybe doesn't know, at least I didn't know when I joined the school committee, was that we our average per pupil spending is $1,800 mm -hmm. below the state average. Now, That's this is true. not communities like us or communities that perform as well. This is the average. And so it's, it's a surprising um, number and a real testament to, to the ability of Bill and his team to be very efficient with the quality mm -hmm. of education that they're delivering. So there, there's not a lot of fat. I mean, yeah, Bill is. does work and his team worked very hard on efficiency gains. I know mm -hmm. you've got a couple of efficiency gains that you're targeting in the next couple of years yeah. to go after, but um, the schools do operate on a very lean basis based on the facts, based mm -hmm. on the numbers, uh, right. operate in a very lean way. Yeah, you do. What, what percentage of the budget is salaries? If you look at all salaries in the budget, not only teachers, but all salaries, about 82% of the uh, budget is uh, salaries. About 50% of the budget is teacher salaries. It's interesting. So the Finance Committee members had some questions for you when you first mm -hmm. uh, announced that you were going right. to seek a, a, a Selectman's you know, recommendation mm -hmm. for an override. And um, I thought I would just you know, throw a couple um, at you, a few at you, and just uh, sure. see what the answers are. Um, one Finance Committee member asked, how are, how are we planning for the potential increase in students with the anticipated 500 plus new units of housing in Westford. And just to give a, a, a brief um, overview, there are some affordable housing um, developments that are proposed for Westford. And, um, mm -hmm. and I think they're un in public hearing, <clears throat> excuse me, at the moment. I don't think they're in, been Yes, they're yet. in various phases of uh, review uh, or submittal uh, to the state. Uh, the Department of Housing uh, uh, in, in terms of the 40B approval. Uh, we're actually anticipating close to 700 units. Now, uh, some of those are freestanding homes, uh, townhouses, but a lot of developers now are going vertical with apartment complexes with one, two, and three bedroom. And that's a challenge, trying to assess how many students will come from those, uh, those resi residential units. We're anticipating another several hundred, uh, somewhere between three to 500 students over the next four to five years. Now, what that will mean is in the next uh, year to year and a half, I will begin the process of looking at redistricting, but I'll also be um, looking at the process of if that number of students does come to fruition, which we do believe it will, um, do we can uh, consider maintaining our current K to two, three to five con grade level configuration at the elementary level? Or do we change to a K to five configuration, which has some educational benefits, but more uh, importantly, logistical benefits in terms of the ability to divide up students. Now, I have dot maps that I work with the town G uh, GIS department on uh, at the present time, looking at where the distribution of students is at the elementary level. And so uh, I'll be forming a committee and advising the school committee what we need to do in the next several years to make sure that we can house the students, that we don't have uh, overcrowding at uh, one school, and. Um, underutilization at another school. So there's a lot of work to be done, but it's always interesting, it's always fascinating work because demographics is part of the profession of education and it's important to know at least three years out uh, what's, you know, projecting what's going to happen and we, what you need to do to uh, meet the needs three years out. So more students, does that mean more teachers? Does that mean more space? It will. It will uh, require more space, more teachers, more materials, more supplies, more custodial supplies, more toilet tissue, more paper toweling. Those are the things that the public sometimes don't see. You would never think about it. No. Um, and um, will involve perhaps more transportation services also because our buses uh, at various levels are fairly full. There is some excess capacity at some levels, but we have to keep a careful eye on that to make sure that we can transport the students also. I think just for the public, just a couple of quick facts. So the total student population right now is about 5,400? About 5,200 right 5, now. 5,200. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just a percent or two below the peak. And the Westford Academy this year is actually at its all-time peak. That's right, and uh, that will say. increase uh, in two years from now. Uh, the enrollment at Westford Academy will be the highest in history, uh, even higher than it is, is right now. And uh, so, you know, what looked like uh, two years ago, uh, a process of beginning to close a school is now going to look like, how do we redistrict to make sure that we can accommodate all the additional students? I yeah. think that's a good way for the public to think about it. I think we had thought that we were actually 
going to be scaling back the mm -hmm. total class sizes at the earlier levels. But with the in-migration we're seeing, right. they actually are coming back up mm -hmm. a little bit. So it's, it's likely that we'll be sustaining it at the level that mm -hmm. we're at uh, rather than, than reducing. Right. Yeah. I, I'm a little, actually I'm, a, I'm fascinated by that because the last time I think I, I looked at um, the, the numbers, it did look like the, popu the student population was gonna, going to decline. Mm -hmm. So what changed? I think uh, the most important factor right now is the immigration of families from outside of Westford. The number of births in town has stabilized at about, um, I want to say a range of about 140 to 150 per year. Uh, that's down from about 300 about 15 years ago. That's births in Westford. So there's a relatively uh, number, a stable number of births. But the biggest contributing factor is families moving to Westford to take advantage of a quality school system. Um, that and developers understanding that the real estate market is still hot in Westford, there's still great desire. Uh, we talk periodically with real estate agents. Uh, Gary St. Martin was, was nice enough to meet with us last year and said, you know, we, we can't get enough units on the market to be able to uh, sell to the number of families who are looking for housing in, in Westford because of the school system. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, it's the school system that attracts families uh, with um, children of school age, but once they get here, it's the overall quality that they realize of all town departments and town services that, that keeps them here. And the important factor to look at down the road too is with all of these new developments uh, projected, that will attract families who are for the most part in peak, still in peak childbearing years. So once they arrive in Westwood, we're anticipating the number of births to, to actually begin to elevate over a period of time. Wow, very complicated. We only have a couple of minutes left mm -hmm. and I just want to make sure that um, we, we've covered everything that you want to cover. What would, what do you, Tom, what do you want residents to know about this requested override? I think that, um, first of all, I'd, I'd like them to know there's been a lot of careful study um, and, and a lot of detailed look over uh, three or four years. Uh, and we're quite convinced that there is a meaningful gap. Uh, we know from our own experience in both the, the private sector and also in the public sector, that an organization that is at a systematic pay disadvantage will suffer over time in terms of attracting and retaining the best talent. We don't want Westford schools to be facing that disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, we take uh, the act of bringing forward an override very seriously. We've looked very carefully at all the other ways we might close this gap. We believe that this is really the best and only way to close this gap. Uh, we think it's an important investment in student success. We think it's an important investment in our property values, in our community values. Uh, and so we really encourage people to participate Please come to town meeting. Please vote uh, for the election on May 2nd. Town meeting is on uh, March, March 25th. 25th. Uh, there will be child care, so <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> please come. Plan to spend uh, a little bit of time with us. And uh, we really look forward to the community engaging on this. It's an important problem to fix. Uh, it's been well documented, it's well understood, and now's the right time to fix it. 30 seconds, Bill. Anything you want to add to that? Well, uh, I was talking with Rotary yesterday, and um, I always look at uh, our budget and, and what we are able to deliver as a return on investment to the taxpayers. And so I think uh, we've done a great job in terms of a wonderful return uh, of the quality of students we produce based on the invested dollars. But there does come a point, as Tom says, where we want to make sure our employees are compensated fairly and equitably, um, particularly in relation to what we're able to achieve in relation to other school systems. Thank you, Bill. And for Westford Cat. This is Joyce Polino Crane. Have a wonderful day.